Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our foundation level sample questions discussion. We are in chapter two and we are looking forward to the remaining two questions of this particular chapter and discuss about the same. To get started, the next question is question number 12, which in of the following is the best definition of an incremental development model. Now, these are very crucial type of questions, which not generally quite often asked, but as a part of this particular chapter, which you saw in the chapter two, the very first segment that is 2.1, certainly talks about the development models, not from the point of how exactly development model works, but exactly the flow of interacting with different phases, and at the same time, the testing activities being organized within that. Now, this is where we need to understand that this can also be a part of our question. You may, not complain, you may not complain back stating that that we did not understand anything about the software development model as this is more of a testing certification. As it is covered as a part of 2.1, you must know how different models vary from each other. So let's have a look on what the best definition of an incremental development model can be, which is referring to the waterfall and the, uh, sorry, not the waterfall and all, we're talking about the agile, all right? So let's look at A, defining requirements, designing software and testing are done in phases, where in each phase, a piece of system is added. Now, of course, the word increment itself will tell you that it happens simultaneously and at the same time, something new is getting added to the existing system, right? So every time you create something, it's not just going to be independently created, it's going to be merged with the remaining part of the application as well. And that certainly sounds like an increment and yes, could be the right answer. But before we confirm on that, let's have a look on the remaining three options and be sure about it. That's always a good practice that you read all other remaining options, even if you think the very first option could be a right answer. So let's look at B, a phase in which uh, the development process should begin when the previous phase is completed. This is more of a like a sequential model and the sequential models are like waterfall and B model where one phase has to be completed and there are no cycle or phase overlapping and you can certainly not move to the next level or next phase until unless the previous is completed. And that's not something which is usual for an incremental development model. C, testing is viewed as a separate phase which takes place after development has been completed. This is again referring to the uh, sequential development models which are our waterfall and V and there we complete the development before we kick off with the testing phase. Coming to the D, testing is added to development as an increment. All right, this could be something confusing which can turn you back saying that am I really talking about A as the right answer or D could be also. Like here testing is added to development as an increment. No. When you talk about incremental development models, we are, we are talking about incrementing on the product, on the system which you are making or building, not in the phases of the life cycle. Certainly, once the development completes, then only the testing happens. But I'm not saying here that unlike a sequential models, you complete all the development first and then go to testing. Of course, testing will be conducted once the development is complete for a particular piece of code and testing is not added as an increment with respect to the development, right? So this is again a right invalid option which is just given to you to give a catchy word increment in the option itself. So judge yourself that is the met methodology, the development model is about phases or it's about the system. So what are they asking you will certainly be the answer altogether, right? So this is where we need to judge and, you know, filter out all that necessary options to avoid confusions and be more confident and pretty sure about the right answer. So the right answer here is A, defining requirements, designing software and testing are done in phases where in each phase a piece of the system is added to the existing. Looking forward to the next question here, question number 13. Which of the following should not be triggered for the maintenance testing? Now, the very first thing you need to recall back from the learning of the chapter four, chapter two, that is 2.4. And here we talk about the maintenance testing concepts where we first thing which we learn is what are the triggers for maintenance. 
And the triggers for maintenance are updates, upgrades, migration, and retirement, of course. So if we have any options related to updates, upgrades, or migrations, they are triggered for the maintenance testing. Now you just have to filter out other way around and pick up that option, which is not a trigger for the maintenance testing. A lot of people go wrong in not reading the word not itself, okay? So make sure you read questions very carefully and do not skip the word not. A lot of people go on the subject and say, which one of the following is trigger for maintenance testing? And then they say that there were more than one option which were looking correct. Absolutely, because you didn't read the question carefully. So it's really important for you to read every single word of the question patiently and derive the right outcome of a question first. Get the answer from yourself that, okay, I know what they're talking about. I have an answer in my already, in my mind already, and now I'm looking at the options. So this time they're asking you not a trigger, okay? Which should not be a trigger for maintenance testing. So A, decision to test maintainability of the software. Now decision to check for maintainability of a software is completely different and has nothing to do with the maintenance testing. If you maintain, then you do maintenance testing, but deciding on that, certainly does not trigger the maintenance testing. As usual, even if you are pretty sure, do give a try to all remaining options to be double sure. B, decision to test the system after migration. First word hitting here, that is migration. Yes, exactly, it is a trigger for maintenance testing. C, decision to test if archive data is possible to be retrieved. Again, a trigger for maintenance testing because when you talk about uh, archiving certain thing, you're bringing it back. And when you're bringing it back, it may create an impact. So anything which gives a side effect, anything which impacts your existing functionalities, and you want to cross check that this new change or update or upgrade has not created any impact, that's where the maintenance testing is triggered. So C is also a good trigger for maintenance testing. And D, decisions to test after hot fixes. Now, of course, this decision is not the option A decision because here the decisions, decision to test after hot fixes is of course a trigger. So here the subject is not decision, it's rather the hot fixes. So hot fixes will certainly be a candidate for uh, maintenance testing because hot fixes are something which are done based on the request and are worthwhile. So if you make that, it is just an update or bug fixes and bug fixes invites you to conduct confirmation testing and regression testing, which in turn is a trigger for the maintenance test. So putting it all together, the right answer here is A, decision to test the maintainability of the software is the right answer. So here we complete the chapter two altogether. We'll be looking forward to more questions from the chapter three in the next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to answer your queries and support you well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.